has allowed me to, to twist his arm and uh, drag him here to, to tell you about something that he didn't really have a whole lot to do with personally other than knowing all this stuff. But I appreciate him coming here and I appreciate him uh, over, overcoming his uh, huge stack of other work to uh, deliver us this talk. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, uh, one of the things that we've, uh, actually Kevin noticed, uh, there was something called the uh, Fourth Foundation Library. It's uh, a collection of uh, many uh, useful uh, things that you don't have to write, they're already written for you. Uh, it can be used as an object-oriented manner, meaning you can create objects or things. Uh, such as cues or whatnot, I can go into that. And it is an extensive uh, library. The other thing is, uh, it's also supported on many uh, fourth engines. Uh, but these are more uh, high level ones like GeForce uh, and, and others. Okay. Uh, again, like I said, it, uh, <laughs> it's not quite a class library, uh, but uh, it can, these. Uh, for, uh, words can be encapsulated into uh, uh, a class library. As you know, an object, not only does it have data, but it also has methods. And you can also uh, have static, and you can also create dynamic objects from the heap. And uh, you, with uh, object-oriented uh, programming, uh, you can uh, do uh, inheritance. And these are some of the uh, things uh, that are in the uh, uh, fourth foundation library. There's a XML, HTML writer, so you can do, you can write uh, uh, web pages with it. Uh, well, obviously there's module testing, and you can also read uh, HTML and parse it out. Uh, also, uh, under, uh, if you run with Linux, there's a thing called gzip, which is a, uh, compressor, uncompressor, and if you want to uh, output uh, escape sequences so that you can uh, place a cursor on a, a screen, change attributes, things like that. Uh, there's also a output stream and an input stream so that all you have to do is just basically create this uh, uh, like an input stream and you just say I just need to read so much from it and the interface is already there. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess we have XIS twice. <laughs> uh, there's also, uh, here we have a timer. Uh, there's a string table. Uh, this a ANSI struct module, I'm thinking that's uh, a fourth uh, structure. Uh, you can also do dynamic strings. Now, as you know, in fourth, uh, you have, uh, you know, like what uh, Ting was saying, uh, he uh, uh, was having problems with the uh, structure. And the main thing is the name field of a uh, fourth word is a counted string. And this is another way you can actually uh, bring these uh, uh, text strings in. And also the other nice thing about it is you don't have to worry about overriding your buffer with uh, using a dynamic text, uh, text string. Plus, you can have a single uh, linked list, or uh, let's see, I think they do have a doubly linked list. There's also an sprintf string formatter if you're uh, familiar with C. Uh, and also, you know, what's nice uh, if you want to uh, uh, do a, uh, a fourth base slot machine, you can use the uh, pseudo number random uh, generator. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, for uh, encoding, you have the SHA-1 and SHA-256 modules. Also, if you'd like to be able to uh, process uh, regular expressions so that you can uh, find uh, instances of different types of strings within a larger string, have that. And, uh, oh, this is a nice one, the uh, non-deterministic finite automata. This is also used to build uh, state machines, which is a very nice thing to do when you uh, program. 
uh, especially for uh, in uh, object-oriented uh, programming, there are two types of objects. You have static objects and dynamic objects. Static object basically is like a, a device that has like a that you can get and set data. A dynamic one is one that will uh, process data according to what state it's in. And we got a, you know, if you want a hash table, there's also the uh, uh, message digest. That's another uh, encryption uh, uh, method. And well, you even have logging. And uh, excuse my, well, that's not my spelling, but <laughs> there's a linear. <laughs> Linear buffer module, and here's we have the uh, uh, finite state machine, which uh, basically uh, uh, encapsulates uh, uh, states, uh, transitions, and actions within the state. Uh, you can also have date and time, uh, even a XML document uh, object model. Uh, let's see. Well. What else we got? Oh, if you want to do fractions, there's fractions in uh, fourth here. Uh, we can also do binary trees, you know, if you want to store data so you can uh, access it in minimum time. Uh, circular buffers we have here. If you want to do uh, CRC calculations, we've got that. There's even, again, now you can do doubly linked lists. And for you, for those of you uh, with uh, engineering, you can do uh, uh, complex uh, data, which means you could probably do uh, a uh, FFT in fourth. And uh, there's more of the same. Hope I'm doing this right. Um, also, again, the, there's an AVL tree. That's a way of. Uh, creating a, a dynamic data, uh, database of things, like a hash table, so you can access it in minimum time. And this is just a quick uh, example uh, right here. Uh, this guy right here, this is how you create a new uh, object right here. This TIS is a terminal input stream. Then uh, what I want to do here is this TIS reader. And now remember, this is written in ANSI 4, so for you guys that don't have that, uh, you'd have to be able to implement read file in your system. But G4 already has that. And what it does is you supply a file ID, uh, and this will uh, this TS uh, the TIS reader will uh, take care of that. Then what happens is. Uh, you can read files or even uh, uh, devices. In this case, right here, I'm reading standard input. That's that's the uh, just the generic input. Uh, all right. And then what this does is this uh, points TS reader to read from standard input. And then you, all you have to do is just do things like T, uh, TIS, I believe it's like you can read lines, read characters, you know, your heart's content. And uh, let's see, Whoop. well, that's really about it. Uh, sorry it's kind of uh, brief, uh, like uh, uh, Kevin said, I'm uh, in the middle of uh, stoking coal and uh, I did this between uh, shovelfuls of coal. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. How do you attach the stuff that's in the library to your own oh, program? Oh, you do that through an include. So, it now, if I could. The source from the library? Yes, yes, exactly. Your source, it's not like a DLL or anything? No, 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 no. It's source level. So, okay. Just get the escape. Okay. Okay. Minimize. Okay. Now, uh, I do have examples on my up dongle left. up and left. Here, may I? Yes, you may, please. I'm somebody else's spacing computer. out. It's nothing worse than somebody else's computer. <laughs> okay, that's a thing. Okay, examples. Okay, now, uh, 
Let me show you uh, the TIS. Where do I find that? <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on. There. This one right here. Okay. Come on, machine. Hurry up. <laughs> yes, I know. When are you gonna when are you gonna use uh, a man's operating system? When are you gonna use Linux? <laughs> this is a child's operating system. Is it really Adobe? Is that what no. you wanted? No, that's not what May I, I wanted, yeah. Thank you. I need like WordPad. So which one is it? It's uh, T I S yeah. down. Yes. There. Now you've made them all Adobe. <laughs> I hate this operating system. Yeah. No, uh, WordPad would probably be better. I guess so. Okay. I can't put the veil on this thing. That's what I say. Yeah. Is there a separate include file for every type? Yes. Oh, yeah. You just include what you want, what you want to do. Exactly. I think WordPad might be the. Yes, there we, there we go. Okay, here you can see. Uh, we wanted to know about uh, the thing you need to do is right here. This says include the TIS, which is the. Uh, source file which uh, implements the terminal input stream. And then right here, this is how you basically create a static uh, uh, object. Here's a string right here. And what it does is it now assigns this, it assigns this string to this uh, input object, TIS1. So, so it maintains fourths uh, reverse Polish notation. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. That's right. And then you can do things like this. You can say uh, search the input stream for the character lowercase t. And then, if it, and then what it does is this will just output uh, all the strings that have a t uh, basically a lowercase t. And here, you want to match uh, space HIS I to see where that occurs within uh, the stream. Okay. So, let's see. This one right here, uh, what it does is it reads uh, a character at a time. And basically what it's doing is it just uh, will print next character colon and then the character itself. And then this one will just pipe out that string. And again, this one right here, you're looking for the word uh, test. And this will find out where test occurs in that string. Hmm, skip spaces. I don't know what that does. And then here, this is another example. This is where I got my original example. Uh, this is we're creating a new uh, input stream called TIS2. And this is where I got the thing that does the reading from whatever file you have. And then here, what this does is, this is uh, defining a string called index.html. It's then setting the uh, 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 attribute to read only, opens the file, and then assigns that uh, file ID to the uh, TIS reader. And what it does is, it can go through a file called, this file called uh, index.html, and print out all the links. And that's what this code does right here. 
so I said and oh and the other thing is uh, uh, when I uh, load this on my system uh, all these uh, examples did work under uh, G4th and then here uh, if, if you look on the uh, source forwarding page yeah. they have a list of all of the yes. sundry NC compilers that yeah, in fact, uh, we should be able to show that. You have everything. Do you have? Oh, uh, do you have Firefox up? Uh, I was dead. Hmm? Yeah, that's the icon. Click it once. Firefox. Come on. Let's pray. It's coming. Yes, but not only does GeForce, but. There's uh, uh, several other uh, forces that this will uh, run on. Yeah. Did you feed the hamsters in your uh, computer here? Uh, I think it's got other stuff going on. It's, it's got two instances of the open office applications and they suck across the world. Oh, that's sort of Let's see. Oh yes, I can hear it wheezing inside. Yeah, why don't I do that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This, this is a computer from a bygone era. Just glad to have a computer that we can still buy the battery for. Come on, baby. Maybe it looks like a putt. Okay. Okay, this is the website right here. Okay, now I think the wiki is the one. There's a wiki, there's a fact. Yeah, okay. No, this is this is that that's just fourth. Okay, uh, I think the fact is that one. Engines, engines, here we go. This is the one right here. Okay, as you can see here, these are the uh, different kind of force. You can see here we have G-Fourth and Big Fourth are both basically the, the same thing. We have PFE, Win32. So if any of you guys are running Win32, this will work on that. Uh, FINA, Win4, I-Fourth, SP-Fourth, uh, LXF, NTF. I don't know what that is. Anybody out here? I figured not. <laughs> and then, obviously, uh, uh, the list, next list is the ones that fourth will not work on, and probably because it's uh, these are uh, uh, not ANSI fourth. And then these other ones they haven't checked, but I think it might work on fickle, but uh, don't quote me on that. So, but the also nice thing is you can configure it to run on a 32-bit, 16-bit, 64-bit, whatever. Uh, you there's a uh, it's, I believe it's a fourth uh, word. In fact, if I could, I just like. Okay. Config, yes. Okay, this, uh, these words here, you configure what a end of line. Uh, 
uh, number of bits per character, number of bits per cell, big endian, little endian. Uh, all these guys right here, you just have to, there's a file that you specify a, a number for. And this will uh, basically configure it for your system. So, uh, any questions? Here? Well, I don't know about it. Huh? Who uses GeForce here? Okay, well, trust me, it does work. And uh, you, you ought to give it a try because. When you do, come and give us a talk about it. Yes. And with that, let's get to the break. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, one more thing. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Ting for his vitamin C uh, talk. Uh, I was having lower back pain uh, and started taking uh, ever more massive amounts of vitamin C uh, and the pain in my lower back has gone away, uh, although I have to take uh, 35 grams a day to do that. And I don't suffer the, uh, uh, the more unsociable uh, aspects of massive amounts of uh, vitamin C. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Give Dave the mic. Dave.